I get I get weird emails all the time. Like the meeting is finished or uh or art has started. Or the uh Hi, Art. Hi, Art. <laughs> we, we can't see Art, but Art joined about two o'clock in the morning this morning. <laughs> At least I got an email that said Art was here. Yep. <laughs> and he swung by and picked him up. And why am I here at two o'clock in the morning? That's what I want to know. I get um, a lot of, like at, right after your C log meeting, I, mm -hmm. I get the videos being converted or, mm -hmm. or your cloud storage is getting full. Or Yeah, I've been emptying that, so that shouldn't be an issue. I was playing today at work <laughs> on my Motorola and on the iPhone. That thing is awesome. Oh. That's an iPhone 15. Hi, Art. The Hi there. Just I have no idea why. I, I, I mean, I don't really particularly care for the phone app anyway. No, I don't either. But Every I time I try to use it, it's... Where is this feature? I know it can do this. Why, mm -hmm. why can't I find it? Mm. That kind of thing. Seems to do just about everything that the desktop app does now. You, you remember, was it, it's been over a year now when, when we had to get Theo for the first time and we went to the hospital and I could not figure out how to make it go to video. Every button I hit was... Whatever, you guys, you guys can hear me. I cannot figure out how to make it do video. Uh, what's going on, Mr. Art? Well, uh, just got back to California last night. Okay. And uh, well, uh, not, not much, but just recovering from the trip going on right now. So... Barbara's out um, uh, replenishing the larder, so to speak. Um, her favorite hobby, which is shopping. Um, yeah, <laughs> the usual stuff. So we're just, as I say, recovering from the trip at this point. Well, what time is it out there? What time is it? It's uh, seven minutes after two. I uh, I don't know. Two two thirty in the morning, I get an email that says Art has joined the meeting. <laughs> well, what I do is I um connect to Zoom, and then it's Ready. whatever time that is, and that's what you're seeing. Yeah. I since I hadn't been here for a while and I hadn't done all the updates on my workstation, I updated Zoom to the latest and greatest version. And knock wood, so far it has worked. So you know. Um, so at any rate, I was doing this last night, and then I uh, just left it on. So. Right. No, I I do pretty much the same thing. I, I have like a little stack of computers that I update while I'm playing games. <laughs> play the oh. math play the math games and update computers. Okay. So I I pretty much do the same thing. That's usually why I'm awake at two thirty in the morning. I try to see. not be awake at two thirty. <laughs> I mean, it happens. But... My Pat Patty, she'll, she's like kind of, I go to bed, 
sleep for an hour, maybe two, get up, do some stuff, go back to bed, sleep for an hour, maybe two, get up, do a bunch of stuff, go back to bed. My 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 sleep pattern is I sleep for a couple hours a day, but I sleep like six or seven times a day. Okay. <laughs> so it works for you. I would have issues with that. I I go to bed kind of early, usually 9 30, 10, 40 till 10 normal. I sleep till 3 a.m., go to the bathroom, go back to bed. Yeah. Well, I got into that doing that when Patty was working uh, midnights, well, mm -hmm. night night shift, and I would have to pick her up at midnight. So I basically stayed up all night long and would sleep all day. Now she's working day shift for the most part. I still am up all night long, mm. but I have to take her to work at like six in the morning. So now it's, I take her to work, I come back home, I go to sleep for a couple hours. And by the time I wake back up, it, part of my day's gone and I'm like, oh, I didn't get anything done. So I quickly do stuff. And then I'm tired again because I just am. I fall back asleep for a couple hours, but it's it's a couple hours here and a couple hours there. Like like today, kind of messed up. My my mom's having car problems. Was having car problems, and I had to go help her. I was about ready to go back to sleep and. She texts me and said, can you come and help me with my car? And I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's not like I can't stay awake. It's just I don't want to stay awake. <laughs> uh, so what was, what was wrong with the car? Uh, so... One it one of the pumps threw a bearing. The and pump? The Honda quoted her like three grand to replace the pump. <laughs> Water pump. They said it was the compressor. Oh, this is a air that conditioning pump? compressor. And they they said it was the compressor and the compressor was um, binding so much that it was causing it to eat through the belts, and that's why the belts were smelling like they were burning. Mm -hmm. That, or it's got too much free on it. Well, it it it, ha it actually hasn't worked for years, so yeah, I okay. doubt it's got too much free on it. Well, if she's not used to having it, just remove it. <laughs> Yeah, somehow or another, what Honda has done, it, it also controls the water pump. Well, I know that's on the same spot. So yeah. it's seized up, it's slow as water. Oh. But if you take the belt off, you can twist each pulley and feel if one is binding. But well, I, I told her, I, I said three grand is ridiculous because, I mean, the most expensive compressor I found was at Napa and it was 400, yeah. almost 500 bucks. And that was the most expensive Shut one. Down. Yeah. Well, the, mm -hmm. I mean, well, if you're just replacing the air compressor. So a cheap normally you can look up the belt and it's got two options with or without air conditioning. Right. Usually you can put the without air conditioning belt on. It's a smaller belt. I don't, I don't think that particular model Came without mm. AC, but maybe I could look. <clears throat> but but she, I mean, most of the cheap 
compressors that that they had listed were under three hundred bucks, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what Honda's going to stick on there, but they are charging you way too much for a compressor. No, well, so like I just played this game. They use probably OEM parts. Well, it's a, a Dynex or something. I, I forget what exactly what it is, but anyhow, it's like six hundred dollars for a rebuilt one. So I just bought a used one at the junkyard the other day for like seventy bucks or more. Right. Because it had been totaled and it only had thirty thousand miles on it. I figured mine lasted for three hundred thousand. You know, with well, the help. but then the, what it is is that pulley assembly is twelve bucks. Oh, that's what I so said. And the belts are if what? You drop it off and and because I mean it's like a bolt holding that compressor on, then you can and, and change the belts out the pulley are less than and put it back bucks, on. Probably. I mean. Unless the water pumps burned up. Yeah, see, I didn't get to read the report. She she said there was a whole report that they gave her. And, but the big well, thing was, was the compressor was bad. And I'm like, well, we already knew the compressor was bad. Yeah. Well, you know what happens is they're probably charging you to uh, a, a, a senior woman goes to the um Mechanic and the mechanic says, "Ah, oh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> here I go," and you know they take advantage. You know, well, they... So, so she went to the the Honda dealer that she bought the car from, which I've always said, don't go back to that Honda dealer. But they've actually been fairly reasonable um, in a lot of their. Very competitive anyway, with within fifty to seventy-five dollars of what other places are charging. So I told her, I said, you need to you need to call around. You've got the report, what they said was wrong. Just ask other mechanics what what they would charge to do it. I mean, the compressor at most, you know, is 500 bucks and they're going to add another 20%, 30% on that, but they shouldn't be charging you a thousand dollars for the freaking compressor and another two grand for the labor. Well, if they're fixing your air conditioning, they'll have to flush the system and they'll have to re recharge the system. That free arm now is stupidly expensive. To yeah, expand. but I don't. And I'm, what I'm, year is it? I don't know. It probably isn't free on. It's probably the, well, it's the new stuff. Twenty five or something like that. It's like I'm. I'm still sitting there thinking though. I mean, the the, the guy that I go to, to that I take that's slow, but good and cheap. Yeah. I don't think you would charge him more than maybe fifteen hundred to do pretty much the same job. Yeah, well, but that's the same. If you're not wanting the air fixes, you are just fixing the pulley assembly on it. I, 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 like I said, I haven't seen the report either, but if, you know, if you just get the engine back to where it's running right without the air, you know, I, I, unless there's something, like I said, the water compressor or water. Yeah, see, I haven't, water seen, pump. I haven't seen the report. The, so the water pump's part bedded in the engine. So she, she may have damaged the water pump by driving it up there to. Yeah, it, the, the, uh, There's power, a lot of stupid engines now where the water pumps in the engine block. The the power steering uh went out on it while she was driving it, which is it's just all part of that same system. Mm -hmm. It's all in the same belt. Yeah, it's all part of that same system. So, I mean, you could have screwed that up too. Well, I honestly think that the power steering pump is what actually caused oh, is causing the problems. Yeah. But they were saying, no, it's the coolant and it's doing all kinds of other stuff. And like, oh, maybe. I mean, miles around. So how old a car is this? It's, a, it's an 09. Okay. So it's about 15 years old. Yeah, it's yeah. the BR-134. Yeah. But she's You're talking about refrigerant. Yeah, mm -hmm. she's, she's actually tried to recharge it once and it it leaked out again, so. Yeah, so the pump, mm -hmm. with, with the pumps 
fairly convincing about that. You have to redo your seals and everything at this point. Yeah. You've been discharged for that one. Oh, it's been years. But we knew that that basically the air compressor, the air conditioning was, was out on it. And it hadn't been a big deal. So honestly, during at this time of year, during in the winter, I wouldn't. I'd probably buy the parts, except for the free. Find out if it's 134A. If it is, wait about two more months, pick it up at Walmart for four dollars a can. Yeah. Because it really gets cheap in October. Um See, that's just the thing. That's what I'm saying. It's eleven dollars a can right now. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. The, the, the overall parts are cheap. The labor may be. Oh yeah. But the, the even problem. even if the compressor is toast, you should be able to pull the pulley off, lubricate that, and put it back on. You're just using the compressor at that point for a mounting stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. worried about the well, well, Disconnected, so if she does put it on defrost, it doesn't try to start it up. Yeah. My niece, my niece's boyfriend, he works at a Honda service center. Mm -hmm. And he's done work on the side for in the past. So I said, just get a hold of him and okay. see what he thinks the problem is because. Three grand seems a lot of money for that car that I don't think it's going to cost three grand. I think even if you pay him to do it on the on the side in the backyard, I don't think it's going to cost you that much. Well, if it's a 15-year-old car, the blue book value is probably not three grand. Yeah, well, that's what... She when she texted me, she said, "I think I'm going to need a new car." <laughs> <laughs> it's a CRV, yeah, mm. and it's got it's got the dual climate control, which we've discussed before, has issues. Yeah. Doesn't work right. My dad has a CRV; he loves his. His is a little bit newer, but. Uh, it does not have the dual climate control and he's never had a problem with it ever. She's had all kinds of problems and a stupid dual climate control thing was <laughs> pitiful. And uh, my sister has one. I think it's a little tiny bit newer, but it's starting to make noise like one of the bearings has gone too. It's got close to 300,000 on it, but I'm not real sure. It's a lot of miles. Yeah. It is probably time. Unless unless, unless the guy says, you know, her, the, the boyfriend says that he could do it fairly inexpensive. It's probably mm -hmm. time to look at that and say, bye-bye. Bye-bye on the CRV. <laughs> I'm saying. Three hundred thousand on the Honda is pretty decent. You can even get some more of them. Not if not if they start having big problems. Or... Well, well, I'm just saying that is you know that's where you're going to start having problems is three hundred thousand. I mean, it's not like a Toyota, but it's pretty close to. I she she's owned a couple. Definitely not a full. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My 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 Ford is definitely the, the acronym fix for rebuild grid. You know, need a new camshaft every thirty thousand miles. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. Okay, but for real, on that that list are all of the Mazda RX whatevers. Those things. It was a beautiful engine, but Jesus. <laughs> I had three different RXs. I had an RX2, an RX4, and an RX7. 30,000 miles, time to rebuild it. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the seals on the, the apex of those piston things just 
get creamed. So you know, it's technically a two-stroke engine. It's got oil mixed in with the, the fuel. The the good thing about having a crown bit is well, <laughs> not just a better engine, but they're they're fleet cars mm -hmm. for the most part. And the fleets know the the maintenance routines and the maintenance is published so you can look. Now mine's accelerated because it is set for five years without anybody doing a damn thing to it. But every every checklist in that in order, it's hit. Every one of them. It's been a little bit sooner than it should, but 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 because it's a fleet vehicle, the maintenance departments know. Well, they do. And when they hit that that one, there's one maintenance issue that if if they hit it, they will sell that car in a heartbeat because it costs more to fix than it is worth to keep the car. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what always cracked me up about the Prius, the sound of the Toyotas and stuff. They got these schedules that are like, do this and this and this and this and this and that. If you don't do any of them, it's a Toyota. It doesn't care. But if you spent the money to do that one, that one, that one, and that one, you can buy another one when it finally does die. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, that's my my other one. My my uh, other crown that it hit three hundred thousand, which is about the life expectancy. You could push them a little bit more, but it hit several of the milestones that it was supposed to hit, and it hit that one hard. Stop and the car just went. I'm done. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I guess they're right. <laughs> when it hits this, when it hit, when it needs this repair, it's done. It's well, like, it's probably when they have to do a full rebuild and replace the rings and all that kind of crap. They don't. Nobody wants to do that anymore. I, mean, I can't even get a place to do it. A freaking clutch hardly. Yeah. Nobody wants to mess with it. And it's it's heavy and it's a shop for like one or two guys and they don't want to drop the transmission and change it out the disc. I had the transmission uh overhauled on on that one. Um there's a place in middle town. It's a transmission shop. Yeah. It, it was reasonable, but they had to do it like three times. You know, because I you know, I talked to the guy that, Transmission, especially in something like that, are complicated. And eventually they got it, but yeah. you could tell. Yeah, not more than more. It, well, so. you could tell that that it when I first drove it, when I first drove it off, I was like, oh, there's something still not quite right. And then it did go in the reverse. And I'm like, oh, yep, there's definitely something not, <laughs> not right. So I took it back and said, <laughs> said, yeah, sometimes you just got to tweak these things. They, they, you, you, you have to drive them like 100 miles before you'll realize that they're not quite the way that they should be. But it shouldn't have gone. The, the, trans, the reverse shouldn't have gone out on it. It did. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it went out. <laughs> And he tried to get it to go in reverse. And I'm like, you're right. I will just drop it again and fix it. <laughs> but it took him three times. It, it, it was in there three times, about a week, a week each time. And eventually he, you know, he, he got it tweaked out to the right spot. So and it works, it works fantastic. It actually gets better, better gas mileage. He's he's tweaked it and he's tweaked it. Really well, so I don't think you wanted to see me again. <laughs> I think it was. It, I know it was under two grand to do that. I want to say it was twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. But they rebuilt it. They they did. They did replace it. So it's pretty much. It is what it is, but 
that was the one milestone that uh, the other Crown Vic did hit. I, I never had to deal with. I should have kept the other one just so they, they could have pulled that transmission off and put, put it in that one. It probably would have been cheaper. Well, it probably wouldn't have been in much better condition. It's been a lot less miles on it. No, it, it would have had more miles, but it, it never gave me any problems. <laughs> like I said, the, the black and white has been about here. The oils and all the stuff was just nasty. It was not, it was not good. It was not a good car. Oh, it was a good car. It just wasn't. Don't let a car sit for five years unless it's a VW bug. <laughs> then it doesn't care. <laughs> but a lot of them don't like to sit that long. Yeah. Oh, I. Back in the day, we used to find VW bugs sitting out in the fields for you know twenty years, and as long as you turn the the pulley and get that sucker to start, and it would run fine. <laughs> Those things might be rusted out pieces of whatever, but the engines would run. <laughs> so, not going to do that with a Prius. I'm not going to do that with nope. a modern car. <laughs> COVID taught me that lesson. <laughs> I think my next car is going to be about a 78 Jeep. <laughs> Just, I love that Mazda. That, he, we, we bought it at 40,000 miles, and it's at 115 now. And it has had no problems. I replaced a belt yeah. in a while. I mean, I, I'm pretty religious on oil changes. Yeah. But it's a great car. But there's nothing on it I can fix. When it does break, it's <laughs> going to be totally. And a Jeep. Yeah. That's, bail anywhere. that's <laughs> kind of how I am with, with the Crown Vic. I mm -hmm. mean, I understand a lot of what it's doing. Fixing it is... is yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not quite as computerized as modern cars, but there's a computer in there telling it to do stuff. So this is not about my truck is a stupid computer. Bypass it. Never needed the damn thing. Yeah. yeah. It runs the injectors. Yeah. And they don't make didn't make surplus of them, so there's only what they made. So every truck that's dying and every computer that bites it, you either have to send it off to guy to rebuild it or um, pay two or three grand to buy a used one from a towing vehicle. Like, that's stupid. I don't know how they did something like that. Yes, that's the... I want to buy one of those... Uh, it, it's more than a scan tool but it's basically a, a scan tool that you plug in and it'll let you adjust all the parameters. Well, yeah, you just need a diagnostic for the full computer. Yeah, they're about 300 bucks. And I've, I've, oh, I don't want them. No, 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 no I, found, I, found, I found one. Well, I'm saying, if you're buying the, the real ones, but yeah, there's some knockoff Chinese generics that I, do a decent job for three or 400 bucks, but... I don't realize need it to they're do not all the cars. I just needed to do the your, Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> just realize that they're not the. Yeah. They, they make they make one specifically so, for the Crown Vicks, and supposedly it was the same one that the Intercept would use when they would tweak the cars after the uh, after the police packages were put on them. Yeah. And you can find them on eBay for like 200, 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. Because they don't make those anymore. So it's a fact of the tool. You can go get the real one prior for that. Well, I, I, I think this one is a real one. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the, the snap on guy was selling his 
thing that I was going to supposed to got it for like 200 bucks, but I don't think he'll dig it out of his toolbox. But it only worked on cars up to like 2012 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Let's see. That would be perfect. But that'd have been the whole snap on reprogram and diagnose the entire car inside and out. Like, oh, Dave, my God. Dude, I talked to him twice and he never did call me back. I was like, so. <laughs> apparently, there are a ton of hidden features in, inside the Crown Vic's computer that, no, oh, uh, I guess police departments would either pay for or decide not to pay for. Well, a lot of it was they never made the options available. I mean, I just, I, I dug through like what my what you're capable of doing on the Prius and. A lot of features you can't normally toggle unless you have the actual, you know, TechSmith or whatever from Toyota. I mean, you can turn off the stupid buzzers for the seat belt and all that kind of stuff. And you can actually turn on like a, a reverse buzzer that beeps inside when the car goes backwards. That would be cool. You know, they're, they're there. They're just not turned on because people don't like listening to it. You That's... Know, so. So you could buy, so all the hardware for for um, cruise is there except for the buttons on the steering wheel mm -hmm. and the button on the on the dash to to engage it. And of course, you could go to a junkyard and buy that stuff dirt mm -hmm. cheap mm -hmm. and plug it in, but it won't work until it's toggled mm -hmm. on. And I'm like. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying needed, so they didn't. They didn't pay for it. So. I, I went to. A, I don't know if there was a menu or a video. I, I just got like an eight gig thing of videos on the Prius for repairs and the features that are on it and stuff. And I remember I don't know, I don't know how many, like seven or eight hundred megs of PDF files. Yeah. Um, but, it's interesting what all I mean, there's like a checklist of all the different things you can toggle. And I'm like, oh crap, yeah, I, I found that's why I was like, when that guy, or when I talked to my mechanic, and the dude said the snap on guy had one, he said we might start with you know, with the actual snap on tool for a Prius. I was like, holy crap, I, you know, so I, me up. <laughs> I found I found. Shilton's and something else, I, I found. A bunch of manuals for for the Crown Vic, yeah. various years, but they're all pretty much the same. So I don't think mine's equipped with it, but there was a Halon system built into some of them where you get in a wreck or something, and it would shoot Halon to suppress fires. It's like this was not for the Crown Vic; it yep. was for an external. Um... External wreck? That's a engine part of it, maybe. No, it it actually it it was a passenger compartment. Uh huh. That's crazy. Yeah. Was it disabled while it was running? Probably. Because by the time you stop, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. It, I yeah. Uh, unless I, you can breathe free on. Hold on, it's it's not good to breathe. <laughs> It, it sucks it was, the air out of your lungs. It was for the uh, meant for the cage area. I guess I didn't want people witnesses. <laughs> I guess I didn't want them to burn up or something. I don't know. I I was reading about this thing, and I'm like, I've seen like stock car racing and whatever that's had some system like that, but well, it's fire dude. Yeah, yeah, fire fire suppression. But, yeah, that's not halon. It's a supposedly one of the dry powders. Well, it's a it's a it's a liquid water. A liquid a, water. Well, water, it's, water it's, is well, liquid. it's a modifier for water. Um, that's mixed into it, but it, it I mean it puts everything out and it won't reignite. Um, yeah, that's what now the, I I may have been reading where where it actually is. It may be underneath the car because that's the part that's going to catch fire. It's underneath. Yeah, I just seems like a weird thing to have in the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it well, it, it, it read like it was a dry chemical. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have to find that again and see. I know my car's not equipped with it. As far as mine, it's not with a dry version. Maybe. It used to be like a, a canister. It's a pressurized like liquid canister. So that's what they used for the fire the race car driver to spray them down there so they're not burned. Yeah. Um so that's what I thought this was was something like what the race cars had. It instantly removes all the heat and all the but combustion capability. It there there were so many weight spoil so it won't burn because there's no fuel. I, I could get a Kevlar door. Yeah. Mine doesn't have them, but I could get Kevlar doors. You can make Kevlar doors. I can make Kevlar doors. What's it called? A polymer? Yeah. The, the, I'm pretty sure that the white the one. plastic milk cartons are made out of. You remember the, the, the white one I have? I'm pretty sure it had Kevlar in the, in the door. Probably would be more effective if it's just loose cloth. It. I mean, it deforms when we when we we had to uh, oh, yeah. we had to fix the lock on, on one of the doors, and when I opened it up, there was like a, a weird mesh. mesh thing in there. I'm like, oh, cool! It's got the Kevlar in it. Well, what is the purpose of the Kevlar? I mean, uh, the stop bullets or what? Yeah, yeah. It's catch all of they, the they, handgun bullets coming through the door. They swing their doors open and they can stand behind the doors and it offers some protection. Some protection. Yeah, I was just saying. Stop. Okay. <laughs> or at least slows it down enough it, it's not lethal. And apparently it was only offered for the front compartment. Not the rear compartment. So your passengers, who cares? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> who cares? Stuff ain't cheap. Why would you try to protect the guy in the back? So the the, the white car had the um, stab resist resistant plates in the seats. Those were neat. Um, of course, the black and white has has the cage, so stabbing. Through the metal cage is going to be a bit harder to do. This piece of garbage, N3540 or whatever it is, runs World of Goo very nicely. <laughs> it's one of the few games I ever enjoy. World of Goo. So it plays natively in Linux, Windows, Mac iPhone or Android. What's the best way to run Windows 11 on a non-11 compatible computer? The end. Um, well, that's what I was saying. But yeah, or I'm wondering what Tiny 11 will take a Windows 11 ISO and remove the, the <laughs> parts that remove make Microsoft. it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, um, Microsoft has threatened to brick devices running 11 that were not Hardware compatible for it. So I was curious if uh, what would one use as a VM platform to put 11 on top of the auto boot for 11 so the user didn't know any better? Or if that's possible. So I made some, some Linux boxes at Risenfeld that Linux booted Linux. up. They booted up Linux. I mean, you got the nice, pretty text display initially. And then, yeah, they, they were running um, UMK and the Libvert stuff. Um, they work nicely. They work surprisingly nicely. There, there's also a, it's a thin client version of Linux for the Raspberry Pi that basically boots up, goes off, looks for, for an ISO on a machine and boots off of that ISO and you never know yeah, that you're running. That. 
I don't remember what that was. But that that won't run Windows there. That just gives you RDP to it. Oh, it does RDP. It does okay, six, yeah, it yeah, does. yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe it is an RDP. I know I've used it, and I know that it works. It's, mm -hmm. it's not the fastest thing in the world, but I was also running it on a Raspberry Pi two, I think. So I'm just trying to figure out. None of our equipment or work is going to be allowed in the paddle. We're in our meeting Monday, we were talking about the, the guy brought up the, you know, all our, our big editing machines and everything for all the video edits, not only in the paddle, but and they're like, we're going to have to drop some serious money this year. And I'm thinking, of course, yeah, because <laughs> most people can run Linux in my book, but I mean, we were talking for you know, graphic media workstation for you know but those, those are not cheap for a leather compatible they're like three or four grand a pop right. and pop with 60 or so laptops and crap like that and they look stupid and like half these people could be on that in <laughs> my book because I mean we're using Google Cloud and we're using HubSpot and we're using Salesforce so why well, HubSpot is it's yeah yeah, it's, it's a cloud thing. Like, yes, so you can get you yeah, can use like well, Chromebooks, right? Yeah, well, yeah. I was just saying. I mean, I don't understand why we're worried about Windows 11, but I know the users would like freak out. Oh my God, how do you use this? I don't know what I'm doing. I have always really appreciated that, especially from the users that come in and say they need help because the icon moves. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. My background color is different. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm me and my dad and, and his wife have been, you know, I've been going and trying to keep their Windows 11 machine running and whatever. And they kept, I mean, they had a ton of ads just everywhere. So I put Brave on there for them. I get a call. I had, I had told them. I said, the icon's going to be different. It's going to be at Lowell Lion. Brave Lion. It's a Brave Lion. Yeah, you should have changed the icon. I get a call. I can't find the internet. Did you, did you click on the orange lion? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me about the orange lion. Yeah, you need to put the background with the Spider-Man Spider with pointing and put the icon <laughs> where he's pointing. Internet! <laughs> Internet right here! <laughs> I mean, yeah, we laugh, but it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and these are people that will tell you that they know Windows. Like, and they make really? more money. How, how often do you hit the command line to, to fix a thing? Because that's the only way you can. I, When's the last time you used PowerShell? <laughs> I mean, they, dad does. Dad does pretty good getting around in in Windows. It's his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, she's afraid of Android cell phones. She she's afraid to click on something because she might click on something oh. and it do something that she doesn't want. He needs a phone that just makes phone calls. I got my dad a new phone before he went on his hunting trip. And he, was, he called mom when he got the animal. And he hasn't called since. And he has been text messaging. Ah. Now, I didn't even know he knew how to text message. Because <laughs> he's never sent text messages. But he's sending these text messages that are string of letters. Because he doesn't know how to do space. Well, so he's got numpad. One, one, <laughs> one step at a time. He's getting there. Well, that's, that's, that's the, my first response when mom showed me his text message. She texted texting back and telling him the zero is the space key. <laughs> and I don't guess she ever has. One, one step at a time. But I don't so, understand why he doesn't just call. <laughs> well, my, my mom is the same way. I mean, she will text everybody and she usually she's trying to 
to be hip and she puts emojis and all this stuff and I'm like woman call me and tell me what you are talking about because I do not speak emoji <laughs> Jeez. XTC if, you, oh, if you're looking for XTC. a thin client XTC yeah um, does VNC, RDP, SSH, X2Go, XDMCP, probably can do other stuff. Yeah, it, if this is the one I'm thinking of, it, it's a really good, you, you set a machine up with a bunch of ISOs, and it will boot those ISOs over the network. And like I said, it's not real fast, but it, it works. Um, it's, Trying to do anything with the network, you've got the devices. I just think it's keeping the track out in terms of i7 state generates. You know, still so a perfectly good computer. From my perspective, the huge advantage of running Linux underneath Windows was that I could SSH into the machine, set up a script to do this, to tell it to hibernate at nine o'clock at night, and then copy that image off. And if they somehow break it the next morning, oh, well, we'll just copy this back. Yeah. Um, and I could unhibernate it, and they never knew anything had happened. I was able to do that with three users, and it was flawless, but it took an extra 30 seconds to boot, which they noticed. <laughs> of course they did. Um, and they didn't like the text scrolling by when it started. It said, Success, success, success. Which I don't get. It. I yeah. to me that's I turn off the, the graphical thing that hides that because I want to see what failed and what succeeded. But, well yeah, but but we're Linux people. We like knowing stuff. Is doing something besides sitting at a black screen it's, for three minutes. It's actually doing something, yes. Like my oh look, it's hung up on the network. My why is it hung up on Dell the network? Dell 7810 <laughs> that takes two and a half minutes before a screen crackles to life. Yeah. Mm. Scares the okay. car out of me. So on that note, we got some very high-end Dell workstations at work that produce no video output for over a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. Then it does the Dell logo and F12 Ender BIOS and all of that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, that's crazy. Uh huh. The, uh, the, my, my new fancy box that I've built out of parts. Yeah. The other day I thought it was dead for like a half the day because I kept turning it on and I had no video for like a minute mm -hmm. or two and I'd turn it off and I'd turn it back on. And it's like, Windows wasn't shut down. The, well, there's no spinning disk. So there's nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, Okay, did my card bite it? Did the board die? I mean, what the hell happened here? And the other day, or at the end of the day or something, I hit the power button and started playing my video game. And um, just happened to notice like two and a half minutes later, the Dell splash screen go by and then the window screen was there. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. And then I got to think, I was like, oh yeah, this has got like 78 quarters or something and 500 yep. gigs of RAM to scan through. <laughs> like you see Jeff nothing until he just comes up to a window screen. <laughs> I honestly Jeez, think wow. it's because the LCD monitor can't sync to an old BIOS screen. Yeah. I think if you put an ancient CRT on there, I think it would be showing you stuff. Would it? Yeah, it might. I don't know. I I, I forgot that that I, computer took that long to boot, though, because it's been like six months since I tinkered with it. Now I got the power supply and the video card and everything to put in it. And I'm like, well, I'll go ahead and do this. And I'm like, Wanted to bring it up and check it. And I'm, just I'm honestly surprised. That they, <laughs> I was like, what? They don't at least say checking or something. Yeah. So, so you at yeah. least know that it's doing something. And it shouldn't continue to do that. Well, it really only does the thorough check when it notices something has changed. So, so, so here's the catch-22 on those particular bells, too. They don't have an integrated video board. Right. So until the PCI bus comes online and goes live, there's nothing powering in the video. So I've used plenty of aftermarket video cards that yeah. come up within 
two seconds. The, the but, video card should. Yeah, I mean, oh, even I'm if it, no, even it's... if it comes into just like a VGA mode or yeah. or worse, a CJ mode, some it's some weird text mode. It you should, should have some something. crappy old monitor sitting around. Right. Try it, right? Because I don't. Not, oh, oh, yeah, exactly. that's not true. I have some old SGI monitors, but I don't know how much those I'll send it to. But so like I said, uh, I, 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 I got with the Dell splash screen for like half a second, and then it was the Windows logger screen. So yeah, it just it took about three minutes to get to. So, it. so basically, it's fast once it gets going, oh, but it takes it forever to get going. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> that's the same. It's like because it, it, it's it has a. What are the NVMe driver rays on the PCI bus? Mm -hmm. So as soon as it's, you know, it what hits the Dell splash screen, Windows logging screen is like right behind it. What, what is it doing? Checking all the arrays and all that stuff? Well, it's going through, you know, checking all the CPU cores probably. And then it's it, it should, like the old RAM check, you know. It, but you it should they make it so that it just anymore. says something. I mean, mm -hmm. just yeah. acknowledge well, the yeah, fact that it's. it's Trust me, I thought that blew another freaking video card is what I thought I'd done because I'd put the new card in the other day, tinkering with it and real trying to make room for it to slot in there and then realized I was still missing a another 12 volt rail and I couldn't power that card and I put the other card back in and then I just set it aside for a couple of weeks and then I, I was like, I finally got a power supply that can power it and uh, I went to check the old one just to make sure it booted before I go to the, through the work of rigging all the new stuff into it. And I was like, why is this not booting? I thought my video card died or the monitor, because it was the monitor that dropped off or whatever and smashed my hand, you know, a couple mm -hmm. months ago and I hadn't gotten around to testing it yet. So and I ended up pulling it off my other computer and plugging it in. It came right up fine. I was like, well, then maybe it's the cable. I plugged it into my main computer and it came it was monitors fine i was like well, what the hell is going on here I, I tried it like seven or eight times over like a course of an hour i reseated the past the ram and looked at the board and i'm like man i hope i haven't fried this because i got a lot of money in this box at this point <laughs> putting all the ram and the chips and but you just forgot it it's a little slow when it starts oh yeah well but it's that's, really cool when it gets it, going it's really really slow when it it's the slowest booting computer I've got. I mean, that's that's just beyond bizarre to me. I well, know. but I mean, it's also like a four thousand dollar computer <laughs> compared to everything else in my house. So it's not designed to be really turned off when you fire this sucker up. And I mean, it's <coughs> with ECC I mean, my, RAM. my my current good computer it does take it maybe a half a second three seconds to get, get to the either. splash oh yeah to get to the splash screen but well that's but if, i mean it's yeah my, my primary it's pretty computer, much there <laughs> I was say, my main computer i've been using with the turbo boost and boot and everything i i don't even get a splash screen i just like power buttoned up Windows is less than five seconds, and there is no option. Well, all it when when I had when I first got that machine and it had Windows on it, yeah, that's pretty much how it was. But since I went to Linux, I do see the Dell Splash screen. So. Yeah, I would say because, but I, I, I mean it's well, mine's a, not a, it's an MSI board. I don't I don't see squat. I, I I see the Windows logo, and then I'm at a login screen. And, and and it's it's on an NV drive, but it's a PCI three bus, yeah. like way back. But um, but it had that turbo boost on it. There's no, I, I can't now. I did something to it the other day. I saw the BIOS, like where I could have hit delete if I was really quick. That's the first time I've seen it in like six years. And um, I, I didn't. I think it's because I didn't have any keyboards plugged in. I stole the keyboard to plug it into the other Dell. <laughs> no keyboard detection. What press in? Yeah, keys. press delete to go into the BIOS. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> so, you know how my uh, my keyboard, 
I, I said it wasn't working for on on some of the machines pre pre OS. It started working on two of the machines. No problem. I was able to get it. I rebooted one of the machines and it stopped. It stopped letting me select a different thing. And I'm like, whatever. I I don't even care anymore. It's just, as long as the keyboard works in the OS, I don't care. I just I've gotten to the to the point that some of these computers, I think they're doing it on purpose. They they just do stuff just to tick me off. That's the same machine that after I uh put the 6.8 kernel on it for the first time. When I reboot it, it refuses to acknowledge that there's a hard drive installed. I have to actually physically shut the machine off and restart the machine, and then it works just fine. And I don't really understand what the hell it did. My son's messed up like that. I have to manually mount the boot drive and boot key it. Yeah, I really don't understand. But of course, I'm running Linux Mint 22 now, which is all 6.8 mm -hmm. something. So I just get, I've gotten to the point where I just shut it off if I need to reboot it. Shut it off. Reboot. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I got weird problems with computers that when nobody else ever has. <laughs> One weirdness we noticed with that Dell I was talking about earlier, it will not, you, you can't install Windows on it with the default BIOS settings or whatever, UFI mm -hmm. settings. You have to, it comes it default right. with set up as RAID and you have to set it for AHCI. Mm -hmm. That, um, and that makes it able to load Windows or Linux. That that laptop that I got from my nephew, um, that second laptop that I got from my nephew, it actually had a RAID when I first started, but Linux saw it, said that it was there, told me it was a RAID, didn't know what to do with it, so I had to go and shut it off so that I could install Linux. But it was a it, that was actually a one of the easier ones that I've messed with. I just shut off the raid and told it to reformat, and it was fine. What you got there? This is my new toy. I got two of these. Art hasn't seen my new toy. It's a it's a uh, one point three inch round ESP thirty two. Oh, very cool. S three. In a little metal case. Hmm. Um, okay, cool. Cost twenty bucks, which is really yeah. What's it do? Nothing right now. <laughs> it's got a demo on it. Winky light. This is this is what I buy at three o'clock in the morning when you're up. At three o'clock in the morning, Seeing that art logs in. it AliExpress is on, and I go, "Oh, that looks interesting." Click. Oh wait, I might as well get two of those because why not? Why not? <clears throat> this one doesn't make it. So I didn't realize really know what I was buying. I knew it was an ESP thirty two. I didn't realize it came with an SD card built it in it. It took me forever to get that SD card out. <laughs> Boy. Uh, because it's it's hard to see, but it's it's recessed in there and the little thing to, to, it it's it's not it's not a it's not an eject, it's not one that you push to to pop out. It's got the spring. Oh. It's got a little a little recess that you Supposed to get your fingernail in, and it's 
so tiny. It's too tiny. You need tweezers. Yeah, I, I ended up taking a little, uh, like a little pen and I finally got it out. Finally got it out far enough where I could grab him. But guess how big the uh, SD card is? Can you guess? 266 million. Good. It's 512 May. 512 oh, Meg. And it is full of stuff that I don't know what if they had wrote a demo for it to display like pictures and stuff. That's not the demo that was on here. <laughs> and I can't really figure out how to access any of it <laughs> because that's the one thing about this. This is a really, really nice display. But there's almost no documentation. Of course not. Almost none. And what little bit they they gave one demo program for it. And that demo program is using LVGL as the display driver. And I do not understand. LVGL, and I have tried to get it to show anything other than the demo, and I get a blank screen, or I get a white screen, I get no screen most of the time. Hmm. So, so what what OS is it running? Oh, it's not. It's the the demo that they. The demo that they loaded up on this actually is supposed to display if your if your computer supports a certain mode, um, it's supposed to display CPU temperatures, CPU. Yeah. That's not what's on here anymore. Because I I couldn't even get it to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, there's no documentation. It said Please connect to Wi-Fi to, to enable uh, whatever Wi whatever this is. And I'm like, okay, I would I would be happy to do that. Tell me how. I um, assume it's a touch screen. Yes, it is. But, but. it's it's a nice display too. But it um it's about the size of one of those round. Uh, temperature thermometer. Um, yeah. See? yeah, yeah, for 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 the home. Um, I'd say it looks a lot like the well, uh, carbon monoxide sensors. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm sure they've used this display for other things, and somebody's come along and go, "Hey, that's pretty nice. Let's make it do." Actually, I don't think the Google one is a touch screen. Probably not. That you rotate the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you rotate the whole thing, don't you? And push. But it's but it's about that same size. It's too big. It's too big for a watch. Not if you put it on a chain and hang it. <laughs> I'm TikToking now. <laughs> oh, if you do that, you need that little uh, Iron Man logo. That's true. If I could get <laughs> if I could get anything other than the demo to work, that would be great. <laughs> so it's Arduino. Program in Arduino? Yes, the they did give one program that's using that LVGL mm -hmm. library, which I just find extremely confusing. But apparently, other people love that library because it's being well, used a lot. You could probably from a crop the video on YouTube. Yeah, I've, I've been Googling fashion or something. It's something very confusing. Change. They're using version eight of the library. And of course, version nine's out and version nine is not compatible with version eight and blah, blah, blah. So converting the, the picture to something that it can read is different. And, and then when you compile, when you try to compile, you get a ton of compile errors. Because you got to go in and do stuff. So, ironically, it has been trying to. My car has a USB port that reads music from. It knows that clearly USB. 
Read it. And I tried and I tried and I tried and I tried. I put NTFS, I put FAT, I put FAT32, I put, you know, everything on it to try to read an MP3. I finally got tired and dug out like an old four gig stick and slow formatted it in FAT, where it took like 10 minutes to format and it reads that one just fine. So I guess I can't quick format. It's really hard to read it. It, it may not like. Uh, That's I cool. Don't... Yeah. Seventy frames a second. Yeah. What's it doing? It it can... No, it's it's bouncing around. It it. So this this demo is. A benchmark demo, so it's trying. Oh, to, so it just running through. A, it's running through a FPS. bunch of stuff, and then it's going to tell you what all the frame rates are and everything. Yeah. Performance. It averages out to, I think, sixty-ish at least. Perfect. Yeah, I think it averages out to around fifty-seven or fifty-eight. Mm. It it changes. I I I'm not real sure why. What internal things going on that makes it um it's, it's, let's say everything i was watching earlier everything was 70 85 but now it's a when there's more than just the gears we're going to have like the all the circles that drop down to 45. yeah and the text the text should be 21. so the rectangles were 72. the round the rounded rectangles were 70. the rounded Rectangles, blah, 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 43, 83 for a border, 78. Kind of pretty. It, it, it's a beautiful screen. That would make a nice sense to me. Well, that's kind of what that's kind of what the demo that was on I for. I, I just want to see well, gosh, how, far, how sticky it is. Yeah. It's got to have Silicon back on it. It's it's got a uh, there. There must be a little bit of a magnet in there because I, I stuck it. It's not it's not real strong. I stuck it up against my metal shelf and it kind of stuck to it. Hmm. So I I noticed that there's screws holding it together. So there are, and you can make it? a teardrop. Oh, because my car probably decided not to go back on. <laughs> so is the actual display square no, or circular? Circular. It's addressed like it's square? Yes. Like 480 by 480 pixels, and you just lose what's in the corners. Okay. Yeah, except that you can, with with other libraries, I haven't figured it out with this library, but with other libraries, you can actually wrap it around, wrap it through, so that that it realizes it's a round display. Yeah. Huh. This this seems like an experiment that hasn't quite gotten but if they sell enough of them at 20 bucks a piece well i would say it's probably designed for something and they're cloning it and selling it because mm -hmm. somebody else has a useful yeah i, I, I wish I, I wish i would have production brought the the see i got i got another one and i didn't program the other one so it's got the, the original demo i wish i would have brought it so you could see but the original demo so there's some software that you run on Windows that will communicate with the display and it will CPU temperature and how many cores and just a whole host of stuff. And it's a beautiful display that... I wonder if that comes with... Uh, what was it they just banned? Oh, I, I was showing that to you upside down, Art. Because the cool grid. Okay. <laughs> U.S. just banned uh, some... Or Chinese thermal uh, 
Oh. It was a CPU heat monitoring. It was a, a, a water. Started with an A. A radiator cooling system that had a little thing like that that had the temperature of your uh, CPU. Well, pocket. maybe maybe that's it. Maybe and they because just banned it from America because it was because made in China. Been, maybe because really. It, and as, as whatever, they're selling them as ESP32. Yeah, you know? it could be. We know how it works, sort of, here. We're just going to tell them the basic. I, I still don't it. understand how a radiator cooler system for a computer gets banned from the country, though. Probably the software. <laughs> Who knows? Well, that's that's just it, right? So if it's communicating over Wi-Fi, maybe it's sending more, more stuff than it should be. Data. Because <laughs> it's it's communicates but, yeah. over Wi-Fi. So to we're not worried about TikTok still after all this time, and that does send everything you do on it. <laughs> it should be one point three. Mm -hmm. The display. Yeah, it's it's bigger than that. I'm going to the outside of the oh. here, not the outside of the case. And that comes back at 1.85 inch. It's better than I thought. See, Which, see, I really didn't know what I was buying. I said, well, that looks good. Put that in the cart. <laughs> and I'm finding one from Banggood, QSPI 360 by 360. Looks <laughs> really similar. By 360, yeah. In fact, I'm pretty sure it has a mic built in, doesn't it? It's and got a headphone this, jack. It's what? Because it'll play MP3s through that. They're, that that SD card is loaded with MP3s. If I could figure out, Music. And, and some of it's really good. I mean, it's all Chinese, or Putin. some of it is really good. It's like weird fusion between. Stuff that that I never would listen to if it wasn't on that SD it's card. It's pretty easy to get out if you push in first. I've been pushing it in, but it does. It's not spring loaded, so it pops out once you push yeah. it in. You need an external power source, though, right? I am so upset. I have pushed in on that damn thing so many times. You're not Steve. I'm not Steve. That's the fact. Maybe I'm not really pushing on it. You got to push in pretty far. I've even used a little pit here. Use that little end. Just be careful. So, <laughs> here you go. Basically saying I didn't push in far enough. That's, that's basically what I, you're saying. I was kind of surprised at how far you had to push it. Well, then it pops right out. <clears throat> it is spring loaded. You feel the stupid spring. Um, that looks like a of, nice little puck. Son of a puck. I could see using it on some stuff if I get around to get out. Eight megs of RAM, 16 megs of flash. And the SD card reader. Yeah, I didn't realize that it was going to come with an. I knew it had an SD card slot. I didn't realize it was going to come with a whopping 512 meg SD card. Where do you even get ones that small nowadays? Well, when I first China? when I first was able to get it out of there, I went 512 gig. Oh. That's an M, not a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> they gave me a 512 gig. Okay, that was well worth the, tw the 20, 20 bucks. bucks. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to have a box of 512 meg chips. AliExpress, $16.59. Okay. Ooh. So you, you, you probably got the, the deal because. Well, it was stuck in this basket. I that's a, probably a promo price. It was it was nineteen bucks when I bought it, but it immediately went up to twenty two after I bought it. 
So uh, they, they're doing like a 20% off first time buyers right now because you've got to fill the window to get past it to get into it. And then once you log in, it's to get in your basket if you're a time buyer, it's normal price. Yeah. Uh, um, at least it was earlier today when I was looking at the CO2 thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I got mine on one of the choice deals, but it was 20 bucks. It, it wasn't. I haven't found it. Well, as I say, I haven't had, I, I've had really nice experience with us several months of buying stuff in AliExpress. So the guys at work are complaining on it. I don't know. So, but, but I at least try to make sure I'm buying from somebody that's got a fairly reputable. I bought. Count. I am waiting for uh, I'm waiting for one order that's got lost. They gave me the arbitrary dollar because it, the order got was slower than it should be. Then it finally started to show up. I've got till tomorrow. And if it shows up tomorrow. I won't get a refund, but if it doesn't show up tomorrow, I am supposed to get a refund from him. It started moving through the system, though. It actually made it to Franklin this morning, and now it's sitting in Dayton. So I don't know if it's going to make it tomorrow or not. I was just saying, as long as it's progressing, and my stuff has never showed up, I don't think it ever existed. Well, it, it's been a month. It's been a well, month. That was from Amazon. And I I don't even really want to... I, I'm supposed to have, not this kind of screen, it's supposed to have a couple of little screens in there and a couple of other microcontrollers. If that package has been mashed <laughs> all over this country who knows where it went i'm not even sure i want it <laughs> i may try to make a claim anyway just if based on what the package looks like so i ordered off amazon some garage door openers from a funky weird chinese name and uh, their price was really cheap, but I was like, you know, we were like a pair of them or something, or three of them for like $15 or something, or versus Amazon's normal price of like $80 a piece for right. each one. And you know, I was like, I can get the whole damn freaking thing for a hundred. It's like kind of stupid, but, you know, and uh, it never came, never came, except it shipped, never had a tracking number that tracked. And then uh, Amazon nuked the company off Amazon, and I couldn't claim reimbursement. So I don't know if they auto reimbursed or because obviously I wasn't the only one that had problems with them. If they banned the vendor off, Amazon, or, well, See, it kind of kicked me off. This is the first time that I've had any major issue with him with uh, AliExpress. Probably. Six years, yeah. maybe. Right. And, and basically, they they emailed me and said, "Hey, we're sorry, your your thing's late. Take a dollar." I'm like, hey, "Okay." So hopefully, if this thing shows up, I just say this tracking it's a lot better than I would have it these days. Oh, it, it it's been in the states since the 18th of last month. But I don't like. It's been 30 days since I ordered. Yeah, before COVID, that package I ordered that I got from AliExpress that with the big hole in it, and it only had the one Bluetooth thing out of 10 in it. I don't understand why the postage people didn't patch the hole and just left it See, still that's... going through the mail with a big gap in it. That's what I'm... The rest of them to fall out. I don't know. I mean, it, it for the longest time, it said that it was in customs, and I'm like, Okay, maybe maybe they're inspecting it, yeah. something. It's a, a seller that I bought from previous. They have been on AliExpress for yeah, God knows how long. 
No. So it's not like it's not like I was taking a chance. It's just yeah. this package just decided it's having issues in the NOS system. Oh, we got mail the other day. It had taken six weeks to come from Indiana. What the freaking? Well, I I had let's see before COVID, I had ordered a, a Game Boy game from somebody in New York. And that thing got lost. Two years later, it, it showed up. Really? I, I got the game. Yeah. I was like, cool. Yeah. But by that time, I had already bought yeah. the bought same it, yeah. game. Yeah. And it gotten a refund from, from the original seller. Yeah. And he had wrote it off. And I was like, huh? hey, your game finally showed up. And he was like, I I... That was two years ago, dude. And I'm like, yeah. It's like, keep it. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, that's what kind of ticked me off, too. Is like, I figured since it cut a hole in the bag, those chips had to fall out. They were in really nice little self contained little plastic boxes. Should have been fine. I just, you know, when I took a picture of the one I got and filed a complaint on the USBC thing or whatever, it, and it only hit two. Distribution places in the U.S. is where they would have had conveyor belts. You know, they were on the tracking for the package because it was a pack package or whatever. And I was like, surely they stuff that stuff somewhere and then figure out who it belongs to. But they said, no, we don't have any of those. I'm like, it had to have been this place in South Carolina when it came in from the dock. Yeah, but see, I'm hoping that the other displays are in a in a little plastic thing, but. This company, even though they've been around for a while, they don't always pack stuff well the yeah. way you would sure. want them to. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing. Sometimes. What did I? I heard something that wasn't packaged right at all. But but see, I've never really had a problem. I usually the stuff works. It's just I Risky. wish it was better pack coming from China. Yeah. But, like uh, like yeah, 20 bucks. You damn better stick that thing in a even well, though it's was, metal. <laughs> well, what did I get? I bought something that was it was like it wasn't Raspberry Pi. They were some kind of little mini boards, but they were just in a Ziploc bag mm -hmm. in a a bubble like bubble bag bubble bag slip bag you know or whatever so there was nothing keeping them from being mashed or bent or crushed <clears throat> i i had bought uh three oled that have an, an encoder the board with the encoder and a couple of buttons and those came in just a ziploc baggie but they had wrapped each one of them with wrapper. with pack with uh bubble wrap so they this were, game. This game bubble wrap. Yeah. Nice but see that created. that's a that's a board that it, mine, mine was three-dimensional with the pins sticking up. Oh yeah. I, that's I, why I was really shocked they weren't I have, obliterated. I have had a couple of them like this with the buttons broken. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, those always come just fine. It's it's when I order screens that I'm yeah. I like a lot better when they come in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I I dropped one of these at work and then somebody came into my cube and I what? Oh. Mm. There's, there's, I generally don't have a problem with that's I actually got a round Jeez. display, one of the smaller round displays six months ago and it came in a little plastic case and one of the buttons on it was broken mm -hmm. of course it was not the important button so i didn't really care but i did kind of i took a picture and filed a complaint and basically said i don't really care if i get a refund or a, a replacement and so i didn't get a <laughs> i just said it's odd. It was in a little plastic case, and it should have been 
protected, but somehow or another, one of the little buttons you got broke. If it was the power button, I would have, I would have been like, "Yep, yeah, I need a refund." <laughs> so, one of the guys at work, he has a picture where he he actually has video of the camera from surveillance on his porch of the Amazon driver pulling up, literally drop kicking his package to the porch and then sticks his head back into the truck, grabs the other one, slings it like a frisbee. Nice. You know, from like from here to that couch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Out there in the I was like, what the he's like, yeah, it was broke to shit. <laughs> And I, the, only, the only reason I got refunded was because I had that video on my porch that filmed him doing that, you know. I uh, our drive, our drive, our Amazon driver, FedEx, and, and UPS driver, they're pretty good. But every now and then, they get lazy and they don't come to the top of the stairs, and they just kind of shove yeah. shove a box close to the door and call it a day. Well, I just I couldn't imagine that like the dude went to the trouble of pulling his driveway and park the truck like you know in the lot like that and then just sling it from the from the, practically from the street and I was just like what the hell dude and he's like yeah right I was like that's called incompetence I don't know the lazy and called I got too many packages and I'm all the time crunch. Well, that's to say, if he was going to be on a time crunch, he'd just park in the street like they do out by us and slung it from the road instead of pulling it in and parking it. But yeah, out there by us anymore, they just stop in the middle of the road. Yeah. You know, right on the high, you know, it's like, okay, it's a hundred, it's a 55 mile an hour zone at the top of the so hill. We can't see them. <laughs> we were, we were, you know, getting ready to come down here and a FedEx truck pulled up and they usually do. They pull up and stop in front of them. This guy was actually cool. He saw that I was getting ready to leave. And he actually backed the truck into a parking spot. And I was like, cool, thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm gonna go, like coming out of Bethel the other day, the lady just stopped in the middle of the street and then walked across, right? You know, and I was like, well, I, you know, I can't see anywhere. I can't, you know, if I. Try to pass you, I'll probably get killed because the car's topping the hill, right? You know, because they can't see where the van was, she didn't even turn the flashers on. So, I don't know if you realize, but when the demo's done, you can actually and it shows the information, you mm -hmm. can actually scroll up and down and on the information page. That's cool. So I found it. Yeah, not a first time buyer. So 2239 delivered. I think that's what it said mine was. What it turned out to. Oh, well. Lucky skunk for a second. <laughs> Ducky Town. That came off of a. a old Ducky Town robot that actually got damaged in the move, but I salvaged 99% of the part. I don't think you're Ducks to Springfield. I know. I know. Assist. Or Lachlan. <clears throat> you know the population of Lachlan now is half illegal aliens? <laughs> half of the population of Lachlan is illegal aliens now. I was reading an article that I know. So, so I don't know if you saw back in July that they had over a thousand show up at the Loveland Food Bank and completely clean it out. Really? Yeah. And uh, so I was reading that article because I was telling a buddy about it. So I never did read the whole article. So I read the whole article. So the fire chief in Lachlan says that the occupants are in half the houses there is there's eight to ten people per room in the houses, and they can't. Bust them for it because they have to get 40 or 24 hour notice before they can do an inspection for occupancy violation. 
So of course they made this move over the so, house. So you give it. them you give them notices that's going to happen, so they just go away. Well, yeah, they go to the houses next door. So, but yeah, the, the population of, of Lockland is thirty two hundred people, and they're estimated there's over three thousand illegals. So their population is literally over half um, illegals are right at. Them. Uh, but that's insane. See if it scrolls fairly well. I mean it mm -hmm. I mean it, it's a nice display for 20 bucks. Yeah. My fault with these is all of them have the USB C on the, the outside edge. If it was inside, kind of, so that you could mount it on a wall and have the cable go through the wall. That would be absolutely perfect for like 15 different things I want to do. Use a use a, a little 90, 90 degree 90 degree adapter. Yeah, it's still yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean basically a, a 2 30, 3 o'clock in the morning purchase that I didn't really know what I was buying. Because I don't read, I just look, oh, that's cool. Nice. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm oh, I, I think I need two of those because I'm a fool. <laughs> I'm debating whether I want to press the checkout button or not. I think I bought something else already this morning. <laughs> I bought AliExpress and their stupid choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Scott, it's killing me. <laughs> I bought uh, vacuum sealed bags for, for 3D printer. I bought, what else did I buy? I bought cheap TPU filament, but it's also, um, it's also a quarter of the size of a normal bowl of filament. I figured it would be good. Because I want to play with stuff and I heard Tinker and I want to have it. Yeah, I want to play and it was cheap enough that you guys and your stinking cheap printers the other day really got me looking at the ones that'll print carbon fiber and I'm like, I don't need to do this right. I really don't I really well no, I really, I really, really want to play I with really one. I don't need this. I would love to have one I can print parts for and you know, that you can put on a car and crap or make a body panel out of. Okay, that's a little on the larger side. I mean, you, well, can, you can glue them together. Oh, that's not good. Well, that's, it takes so much work to hide those seams. Well, that's I, you see that guy's that built that rebuilt that Bugatti. Yeah, he's done. It's but, pretty, you know, I probably I weighs have, 20% more than the original. Might, but you don't care. I've seen, I've seen some pretty impressive three D prints that people have sanded. Oh and yeah, mm -hmm. taken real a lot filler. of time. And have you seen them? Oh new... my gosh, and they're beautiful. By the time they get done polishing them, and have you seen the new video of the C three PO helmet? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, actual gold plated. Yeah, I, I mean. I, I I I mean it's killing me. I, I wanted to make like a put like Raspberry Pi cases a C three PO head that's sitting on the side with a like black like bulb out and then like the <laughs> video ports to one of the eye sockets or something. You know, while the other eye blinks while you cut keys or something. I think that'd be awesome to do. But to make you know paint it all right and stuff, and I'm looking at what that guy has done to do it. I'm like, holy and crap! You, yeah. you know, like they're like good. plated and. Days on it. I well, mean, yeah. days. He, he walks through the video and I spent days just sanding it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a whole lot of work. <laughs> I watched. I, I watched a guy it in silver and then plated it with nickel yeah. and then plated it in gold. And I'm like, good God, dude! I watched. I watched somebody. I watched, <laughs> I watched well, somebody. Have to, otherwise, it'd peel off. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying. And nickel is. To, to, to bother to go to to actually yeah. plating plastic, you've got to have some money that you're. I, just I really watched a guy. He want authenticity. He, he printed something that he was going to use as a mold to make metal, mm -hmm. but 
because he didn't want the sand the the lines to show up in the metal, he sanded it and it was a beautiful pristine and then he cast it or in sand and whatever and so he can build a thing that he can form the metal into and I'm like my god that is a lot of work to make like a vase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's making a permanent mold. Right? No, he, no, he, he had the to shop the mold. And, oh, is it the one time sand mold or? Yeah, it, it was a sand mold. He had to, to get the. Well, to get the um, but he could reuse the original. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's not so bad. It's. Aluminum molds that we used to do in sand, they were a one time shot. You have you have the original cast or whatever that you could you could remold around the original vase, the three D printed vase. I guess it just seemed like an awful lot of work to go through for something that you could go down to the dollar store and and buy and buy. But it was beautiful. It was it was absolutely gorgeous. And he sand he uh, didn't sand it. He Polish this metal all up, and I mean, it was nice and bright and shiny. And I'm like, dude, you spent days making something you could buy. Buy. Yeah. <laughs> no, on the other hand, it. if you don't mind the, the lines in it, you can do it as a lost wax, and that's quick. It's probably easier to polish the metal thing. Oh. Well, afterwards i've i've wanted to play around with tpu for a while and i figured it was eight bucks for a quarter wall which may be a little it's a little, it's not uh, a little but it's so enough it's enough that to play with to play with to see if my printer even will like do it my printer set but all three of my printers say that they'll do it, but you gotta learn how to do it. They gotta figure out all the settings and everything. That's the real soft thing, right? So apparently there are various grades of TPU. Okay. And the Ender 3 does not have a problem doing the hard, the hard TPU. It has issues with the softer TPU. Mm. Um, but even even I was watching a video about it and the guy said even if it's soft TPU, all you have to do is slow the printer down, make sure that the turn the fans all the way up. Yeah, make sure that, that there's certain things done, but a print that, that would normally take like an hour to print is going to take like five or six hours because you have to slow this thing down to a crawl. Otherwise, it strings all over the place. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay. So I don't know what I got. I, I don't know if it's hard, soft, or it was just cheap TPU because I, I look, Micro Center still wants uh, about 32, I think, for, for a big mm -hmm. roll. So I may have paid a little too much for it, but it's better than it's better than thirty two dollars. Yeah. Well, the other watch on that fast track gets some more of that. Yeah. Usually, you got to go to well Schoolhouse Road, I think, to get it. But Schoolhouse. Yeah. I've been there. Where's that? The one off of. Um, Montgomery Road at 275. So oh, okay. Yeah, I I mean if I if I really was printing a lot of stuff, I think that's what I, I I would I would want to I, I'd be like Ray and want to have a small shop of filament, but he's right. buying that stuff from China for I was gonna say Tom Ray, he probably got it. Uh, He's full of village, village and he's buying that stuff cheap. I was gonna say he probably gets it by the pallet. But uh 
what else did I, I bought I bought some other stuff. Those uh those uh plate holders that I had emailed about the the Ender three uh oh, yeah plate uh glass glass I haven't I put them on and it looks like those are going to work really really well for only a couple of bucks. But I haven't tried it yet. So, <laughs> but the stupid clips on those Ender threes that hold that glass plate on there is horrible. So almost anything's better. You don't like the little clampy clamps? It's not really a clampy clamp. It's a um, maybe it's paper clamps. No, no portable clamps. No, that's not what these are. That's not what. That's I mean. what came on mine. Oh, but lucky you. Maybe. Well, I, mean, some, I mean, they're both a little. Somebody snap. There's some of those little clamps like what, you. What, the, what that is is somebody. Somebody didn't like the the original clamp that was there, and. <laughs> well, I, I tried. I tried the paper clamps, and they didn't work real well because they kept getting in the way. way. Well, I figured it probably would. I've never. I still haven't printed with mine yet. I have, I really but need to. These these little. I'm afraid to start because I think once I get started, I'm going to print a lot of stupid shit. <laughs> and the problem is, what I really want to print, I'd probably be a lot better off doing on a resin printer because I want to do like little. Speaking of resin figures. printers, when when are you going to get me some stuff so I can make keycaps for you? Or... Um, or, are, or or is that I, still a thing? Honestly, I had almost forgotten about it. <laughs> okay. Um, or is that still a thing? Are, are we still doing I, that? I haven't <laughs> been able to get them on the, the keyboard. Okay. But I got to clean um, up to the inside of those spots. So so we still need to do some tweaking or whatever. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, it it was definitely worth. Trying one time anyway. <laughs> I'll get you some. That stuff, some resin. That stuff. Uh, those keycaps actually turned out a lot better than I figured they would. Yeah, they're nice. Even in the resin that isn't going to hold up forever. <laughs> but maybe turn them out. No, I don't. It, it was the it was the cheap resin from from Micro Center, the just generic resin. I don't know what it is. It, the water soluble stuff that oh. is easier to clean up than the other than the than the. Mm -hmm. So that, they the, look like they're a whole lot prettier than prints. The resin printers make really nice prints, but I mean, we're talking about somebody spending time cleaning a a, a three D print up. Uh, they they definitely you you definitely work a little bit longer. I mean, you got to put them in the curing light and. Do all kinds of stuff and kind of clean them before you cure them because if you cure them while well before they 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 get clean, of course you're curing imperfection. <laughs> Definitely a longer process. And mine, my resin printer is one of the older, smaller resin printers. Uh, Probably second generation, maybe, but it's one of the small, you've got the small print bed, and it's not fast by any stretch of the imagination. It's, it, it, it does good for small prints. I mean, it, it really. Well, it's got a real big one if you want to fish. They marked it down to 1200 this week. I think they're on if, eBay if I, for like nine, but if I used. if I buy another three D printer, it, I'm either going to buy a bamboo or I'm going to buy one of those Cobra 
K3s or whatever those things are. The incubated K3. Not that I actually need to do multi-filament, but the ability to do it. So I'm going to see one. <laughs> Why the Muslims bamboo? But one of the guys, well, actually two of the guys down I work with have the bamboo now. And they're both keep bragging about how nice they are. I'm like, shut up, people. I don't want to drop 1200 bucks on a printer. Well, I, I would go... Me, me personally, I would probably go with the, if the bamboo A1 with the uh combo drive, I think it's under five. Yeah, it's like four, nine, nine, five, yeah. something like that. It's they got like the, was it the S1 or something that's like 899 without the like, body on it? Yeah, but they yeah, got if they, you're gonna do the like ABS and SPS or whatever, you need the body. They they've got they've got one that's pretty nice for nine hundred, and I'm just like ah, I'm not spending. I mean, at, at well, most I want to spend is five hundred bucks. The five hundred buck one won't do the SPS or the ASA or whatever than some of the others. The uh, carbon fiber. But see, that's that's why I was looking at that any cubic because it will, and it is in the five hundred, four hundred, and some odd dollar price range. And I'm like, yeah, this is a nice, and it comes with the 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 storage box uh, filament thing that also is a dehydrator, so that uh, you can leave it in there and. And I'm like, yeah, the, 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 the bamboo doesn't, the their, their box doesn't do the dehydration. It's just a thing. And I'm like, hey, for about the same price? Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> probably worth the difference. But I got to justify. I've got to justify needing four colors. The, it's easy. It doesn't have to be four colors. You're just doing a big print. I'm just doing a big print. Mm -hmm. The uh, the the any cubic would also do. Uh, you could buy a, another one of those boxes, and it would do up to eight colors. And mm -hmm. I'm like, that's pretty awesome because I don't think the bamboos would do that. I think the bamboos are limited to four colors. It's got it's got tangle detection, which is a nice feature, and it's got filament out detection, and it's got a bunch of features that the more expensive printers have, and it's one of the more reasonably priced yeah. printers. Well, so. both these the one guy made his armor for the Festival that's really good. And it turned out pretty good. And the other guy got his. And the next uh, day or two, we knew he got his new printer because in our meeting, he had a Millennium Falcon in like a little hyperspace tunnel <laughs> with the lights flashing through it. Like it looks like it's going. Let's and see. He's like, Yeah, I got my new printer. So that hasn't stopped printing all weekend. <laughs> the the biggest drawback that I have found with 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 that any cubic though is there's no Linux software for it. It's only Windows software, oh, right. and that's that's I'd be that. that's why VMs exist. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the one thing that's killing that. I, I'm I've told Patty. I told her. I said I'm really thinking about getting this this 3D printer, probably income tax son. But it already has Windows software, and I really don't like that. <laughs> it seems like the uh, the the K three or whatever it is is fairly new ish, and maybe they're working on porting. It I looks like it's based on probably supported by the software for the for the bamboo the no, K the, the mine yeah. Kira? I so. Awesome. Yeah. 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 
that lists like 60 different yeah. items in a workplace. I download PERSA and I think the K2 is supported, but not the K3. Same with the Bamboo software. Bamboo has the K2 listed, but not the K3. And the K2 doesn't support the four filament yearly box. And I'm like, yeah, but if I'm going to spend, yeah, if I'm sure. going to spend that kind of money, I yeah. might as well spend the extra 30 bucks and get the, the four filament deal. Uh, Oh, this is, that's, I'm going from the perspective I've never printed one yeah, person on this at all. Yeah. To me, it's luxury, but, but you know. Well, yes, four, four filaments is definitely you know, a luxury. Yeah. As I say, if you've, you're playing with it and doing more advanced stuff and want to make stuff in multicolor, then yeah, it makes more sense to be able to do it. My my thing is, is I'm looking at the cost and I'm just going, it's all it doesn't make any cost. sense to buy this when I could yeah. get that. Even if I, even if I don't use it, it's yeah. I know that too. There's some nice printers out there now, and it's just gonna keep getting better. It's it's fast. I mean, everything I've got is old and slow at this point. Well, that's the thing. Can some of those old ones be retooled? So. Maybe. Oh, just, just, just Maybe. Um, I know part of it is firmware, part of it is motor, but I mean, they're... So that's why I was wondering why that, you know, it's like, I'm not that familiar with motors, but I was like, I thought it was kind of awfully interesting, the ones that were clearance in were, what is it, 4038s? Uh, and the regular price ones are 4042s or something like that. So I don't know what that means, but I figured it's probably a speed or accuracy it's, count. It's, Precision. There's there's both there's a speed and there's a how many how many rotations how many split steps mm -hmm. takes or whatever and, and I don't I off the top of my head I don't know what well, that's that. I, I, I've always wanted to be good at this stuff I've never gotten that far yet <laughs> I don't spend my time I, I playing know, with it the I know that that it in and out enough to know. I know that the new printers use a faster thing, but they also have better firmware. So it, it's like a combination. With better parts and better. And like, like the one video that I watched about that Inucubic that really convinced me that, that the Inucubic was the one that I wanted was she even she was saying you know the first couple of layers it, it moves pretty slow it makes sure that that it gets good adhesion and and everything but once it gets past the first couple of layers I think it to town and it's five to ten percent faster than some of the others and the prints really don't look that bad yeah she said she put she put two prints from competitive printers up next to it. And yeah, you can see that there was a little bit of a difference. But they look like the prints that I'm doing now. So what? Yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> I mean, I don't I, I, care. I really watch some videos on that bamboo and, and them comparing it to other and, and, and they're like, okay, oh, yeah, yeah, this one took me nine hours to print this, and this one did it in an hour and a half. And I was like, there was like one little micro strand where something wasn't, where, wasn't where you right. see a, you know a little yeah. fuzz in, in the the little boat or whatever and i'm like yeah but it did it in an eighth of the time you know it was like what do you you know yeah well that's pretty much what i'm saying i'm, it, I'm like you know you could have had that in the other one if it glitched you know just I, as I easily said, i looked at the press that this girl was showing and i'm like Okay, it looks like what I'm printing now. Yeah. And it did it in a third of the time. Sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's a uh, three till. Like, I guess we're going to call it a, a day so I can put all this junk away.
And uh, we are virtual next week. So hopefully I will see you next week, Mr. Art. Okay. All right. I'll Look see forward to it. You guys take care. Have a good week. Okay. And uh, stay out of trouble out there, Art. <laughs> I'm sorry? Stay out of trouble out there. Oh, well. If, if you I'm too old to get in trouble. <laughs> we'll see you later. Take care. Have a good one.